Welcome to the Full Tilt Poker Million Dollar Cash Game from 50 London. We're nearing the end of the game and the player that makes the most profit this evening will also leave this fantastic venue as the series champion. 13 of poker's highest rollers are in town this evening. Eight of them are already seated at the table and ready to go. From English to Danish to American, the big money has come to town. And in this game, it's all about making your friends go broke. Each player is starting with a minimum of $100,000 of their own cash. And if they lose it, they can simply reach back into their pockets and buy back in. The starting lineup for this game is a who's who of poker stars. In seat one is seven times World Series of Poker bracelet winner Eric Seidel, who's made over $5.8 million in tournaments. Seat two is Roland Wolf, originally a journalist, but now an accomplished player, who's the only person to have won the WPT and EPT titles. Next up is the only person to win four World Poker Tour titles, Gus Hansen, originally from Denmark, but now spending most of his time commuting from Monte Carlo to Las Vegas. Then the man who needs no introduction, Phil Ivey with five World Series of Poker bracelets and also another regular visitor to the Bellagio's $4,000, $8,000 limit game. In seat five is businessman Paul Kemsley, who appeared in the British version of The Apprentice and loves to gamble, but today any profits he makes will go to charity. In seat six, it's Mike the Mouth Matasau, self-confessed best player at the table. He's won over $4.2 million in tournaments, but loves the cash games just as much. Then in seven is loudmouth Lithuanian Tony G, who won the first Asian Poker Tour event and donated half his winnings to a local charity. Finally in seat eight is Alan Cunningham, who came fourth at the 2006 World Series of Poker main event and was the 2005 World Series Player of the Year. But who out of these players and more will take home the money and the title? Let's join our commentary team of David Tuckman and Gary Jones. After 103 hands, Paul Kemsley, he's oh, now 97,900, only down 52. Gus Hansen's our big winner, he's up 93,000. Phil Ivey right behind him, 90,000. And Mike Matisau, still our big loser, he's down over $130,000. Oh. Well, Phil Ivey on the phone, having a quick look to see if there's anything he likes. He's reaching for some chips, so uh, whatever it is, it's enough for him. Yeah. 18 to play. He's made it 1,800 nice. to play. Right. Let's, uh, nice. since we only got an hour left, let's uh, double the stakes, man. Oh, you want to play higher, do you, Mike? Well, I mean, we're only playing another hour. Let's let's fire her up. Cool. Cool. Tony G nice. likes what he sees. Nice. He's called with the ace queen, so the action, uh, the momentum is still with the. Bill Ivey. Ericsson as well with his eight seven of hearts. There are a few flops where he can get involved with the Phil. Oh, this is a real interesting flop here. Everybody's got a piece of it. Eric Seidel's got second pair. Tony G's got top pair. But Phil Ivey, he's got the flush draw. Six and a half. Action is on Phil Ivey. Yeah, it's been a six and a half thousand bet from uh, Eric Seidel. What time's yours? Mine's at uh, like one. He's let out, putting the pressure on these other two players. All in. You got a tournament there. Wow, no messing from Tony G. It's the first time I'm going to be there. Wow, that's incredible. Seidel bets with second pair. Ivey calls, and now Tony G has moved all in, risking all of his chips, and he's way ahead. Everybody's out. Unsurprisingly, the other boys have passed, <laughs> and Tony G pulls, pulls that pot down. He shows the queen, unsurprisingly not the ace. I think the rest of them can guess. <laughs> to get started, one player has made the nominated dealer or button. Then the two players to the left post the small and big blinds. These are forced bets to get the action started. The big blind is always double the small. Unlike a tournament, the blinds stay at a set level for the whole game. In this case, $300 and $600. Plus, there's an ante of $100 per player, which must be paid if they want to play in a hand. Once the blinds and antes are posted, everyone has dealt two cards. We have a round of betting, 
Then three cards are placed face up on the table, called the flop. These are the community cards for all the players to use. Then we have another round of betting, after which the fourth card, the turn, is placed in the middle, followed by some more betting, and the last community card, the river. Then we finish off with a final round of betting. The best five card hand wins the money. We are at 50 London for the Full Tilt Poker Million Dollar Cash Game. The action has been absolutely fabulous. There's a shot of Phil Ivey, one of the world's greatest players. And a shot of the whole table. Very, very old, like... Like a cousin, right? Queen, queen, seven, seven. Alan Cunningham, fourth place finisher in the 2006 World Series of Poker main event. He has the button. Yeah, he managed to pick up $3.6 million. Over $8 million to his uh, to his name in tournaments, tournament winnings. Tony, Tony G's raised it up here with six deuce of hearts. I think he's just brought it in for the six. I'm happy to make it five and one, whatever, with 200 ante. Whatever you guys want to play. Well, we don't have an hour left. Listen, somebody get broke. Well, there's Eric Seidel yeah, with King Four. Nothing long. for him on the flop. Uh, and Roland DeWolf here, he's got a flush droid. He decided to check back. call. Yeah. He's actually uh, winning with his King High. Put, yeah, put, now he's got, got the seven. A, a, a mandatory straddle, yeah. I'm in. Okay, I'll try it. Five thousand to call. Anybody object to the mandatory straddle, 3 6 12? You're a good caller. So a bet again from Tony G and a call from Roland. What a fantastic card. And Roland has checked again. He's made the king flush. I think he's trying to induce a bluff from Tony. And it's worked. And we've seen it again here. Roland, he, we saw a hand earlier against Paul Kemsley where he really played it to perfection. And here again, he has gotten the absolute maximum out of six deuce of hearts. Paul Kemsley, brief trip to the bar. Have, have a smoke, quick drink, before getting back into the thick of the action. One thing great about playing at 50 London, you can always get a drink. Roland's thinking about just what to do now. Yeah, obviously it's either a call or a raise. There's no way he's laying this hand down. No. It's only one hand that can beat him. Tony G with absolutely nothing. Six high. Whatever it is. About 75,000. Approximately. No, I'm 37. 60, 60,000. Okay, 60. This is serious. Bro. Pot is 26,000. Roland de Wolf, the sheep, deciding what to do with his king high flush. Well, that can't make Tony G happy. No, I think he's pretty sure his six high is not good right now. <laughs> he actually has the worst possible wow. hand that you can have at the moment. Mr. Mr. De Wolf. So we're putting, uh, we're going to play auto straddle, 3 6 12. Awesome. Looks like Mike's wanting oh, to kick uh, the action okay. up a bit. Yeah, okay. I mean, I'm not going to do it unless everybody does. Trying to make the uh, the blinds no longer three and six hundred. He's trying to make them three six twelve hundred. Kind of put a mentor straddle. Yeah. Six and twelve with two hundred dollars. Or put a third That's blind in there. Okay. And the action is on Paul Kemser there. Phil Ivy in the big blind. Phil Ivey, really, just a true professional. Didn't even really notice him, and he's up 90,000. Just amazing how he knows when to mix it up, when to stay out of the action, and when to push it. You don't see him forcing it right now. He's letting the gamblers mix it up. And speaking of gamblers, Tony G in there with King-7 offsuit. Jack nine for Eric here. And once again, you notice how Eric Seidel is playing hands in position. Oh, 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 boys. That's three spades. That's a 10, a 10, and a 10. Bam! 
We just won 30 in props, baby. Whee! That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. No, that's why we're back in action. And there it is, the king high flush. I finally found a game I can beat. Props. Now Eric Seidel with Check. Eric Seidel with Jack Nine there. He's open ended, but with three spades out there, you don't really want to get involved. Well, we've had a bet from Phil and a call from Paul. And Paul's got second pair. But at the moment, Phil Ivey has him drawing dead. He's flopped the king flush. Turns a deuce of diamonds. It's no help for uh, Paul Kims Kemsley. And Ivy says, hold on a second, I'm about to win him 20. I've got a flush. Well, he's taking this one down, Phil. Paul's managed to get away from his middle pair. So Poker's Elite still battling it out for massive money here at the Full Tilt Poker Million Dollar Cash Game. Join us after the break for plenty more. It's holding up as one of the biggest no-limit cash games ever televised anywhere in the world. So let's rejoin our commentators of David Tuckman and Gary Jones. Alan Cunningham in first position with the ace ten of spades. Let's see how much he likes this one. It's not a big hand and he is out of position. But still, he makes it 2,000 to play. The only way I'm going to win, and I'm going to win. Write it down. The only way I'm going to win is some kind of freakish. Alan's focus, his concentration at the table is just legendary. That's not freakish. That's normal. It's normal. Phil Ivy here. He calls the 2,000. And that's what he's got. Pocket sixes. Never remember that. Where is this hand? Alan, right in the one hole. Oh, and Paul Kemsley with the with a snowman. Mattis is definitely going to play this hand, and I'm sure Tony G is as well. So plenty of cards out there, a lot of action could be coming on this hand, especially if they're middles. I think Tony G would have played any two cards, but he's certainly going to play eight, nine hearts. And he's gone in front. Yeah, not really an action flop. But it's going to be 10,000, I think it was uh, PK said. Tough spot to be with three players yet to act behind you. Exactly. And PK takes that pot down with a nice oversized bet. Real strong play. The power of position. And the power of money. One of the players I've been uh, extremely impressed with so far has been Roland DeWolf. Don't think he's put a foot wrong so far. He's managed to accumulate over 30,000 without any, having to play any big pots, without any real risk. And the ones he's been in, he's played to perfection. But here's Paul Kemsey, 10 six of diamonds. He brings it in for a raise. Madassau's there as well with king five of diamonds. These boys are definitely gambling. I think a lot of the others are uh, just looking to pick these boys off. King. Tony G in there as well with pocket threes. Two. Check. Interesting flop here. Mattisau with a pair of kings, but Seidel has flopped Check. a flush draw. Check. King Check. five of diamonds, a real speculative hand. Not necessarily the flop you're looking for with Three. it. Well, everyone's checked the flop, and look what's happened. Tony G has made three threes on the turn. Six thousand. <laughs> and Madison leads out for six thousand. Quick call from Tony G. 
Madisal thinks with all the checking on the flop, his, uh, his king might be good. And it was. <laughs> Little does he know. <laughs> Seidel can still win this pot, though, if a heart were to fall. Normally, you have nine outs when you have a flush draw, but in this case, the king of hearts and the three of hearts are no good. Nice. Check. And there's the ace on the river. Tony G is filled up here. Tony G bets 8,000. Seidel quickly lays down, and Mattisau calls. He does. He think he thought his king was good. Mattisau continues to bleed off chips. Here we are with the ranking of the hands. First, we have high card. In this case, a king high would win it. Then we have one pair. In this case, a pair of aces. Then two pair. Jackson nines will do it. Then three of a kind, three of the same one. Three fours. Then we have a straight, five cards in order, not the same suit. Then a flush, five cards, the same suit. Five hearts will do it. Then we have a full house. Three sevens, two kings. This would be sevens full of kings. Four of a kind, four kings. Then we have a straight flush, five cards in order, all the same suit. And here's the most beautiful hand in the world. Royal flush, 10, two ace, all the same suit. Button moves over to seat number eight. That's Alan Cunningham. Gus Hansen, his first act. It's been quite quiet for a while, hasn't he, Gus? Well, we haven't seen uh, too much from him. He's got king, queen this hand, but he's in first position. I never want to let uh, position bother him too much. It's like getting robbed. Re-race. Like Gus, re-race from Paul Kemsley. Paul Kemsley obviously not playing his cards. Wow, well, Mike's called with the uh, ace jack of hearts. Pass. That's actually got Paul pretty crushed. Pass. 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 A raise of 2,800 to uh, Gus. King Queen off suit looks pretty ugly right now, doesn't it? Uh, I'm going to play with my buddies. It does, but he's uh, not afraid to call the extra 2,800. He's Ooh. put 22 in there. Well, he wants to play with his buddies, as he says. Let's see if the flop brings something for him. Three, nine, four. Well, that's a flush draw for Mike Mattisau. It's a big flop for Mattisau, but Kemsley's actually outflopped them both. He's got a pair of fours. 10,000. No well, Mike's looking for a hand to gamble. He's only got 44,000. And look at this, he's going to move all in here. Now, normally, normally when you have overcards and a flush draw, you have 15 outs. But in this case, the jack is no good. So Madison is down to 12 outs. Can Paul call this with just a pair of fours? I mean, can you correctly put Madison on a flush draw and call him and gamble it up here? Well, Paul might not even try and read his opponent. He might just decide my fours are good enough. Let's gamble, baby. Thirty-two thousand. Well, you know, you know, you know, PK's got the gamble in him. You know what? Only on the basis you ain't lucky. Cool. Cool. He yeah. says cool. He's right on the basis you're not lucky. It's a pretty well a coin toss. That's not really good. Oh, that's just a slap in the Better face. You? You're not lucky. I'm going to call you. I mean, anyway. And it is a oh, coin toss. Well, it's not actually, but that's a good card horrible. you got against him. The jack's yeah. kind of pretty big for you. Jack four. Yeah, he had like. Madison's got 12 outs here. Jack he four. Four. needs an ace or a heart. That's a big call. Uh, it's yeah. about a 57 43. You're going to win this one. 57 well, percent favorite for Kelmsley. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. 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 Yeah. Five. Turns no help here. A deuce will give him a wheel. No help there, and PK is going to take it down. A $96,000 pot, and Mike the Mouth Mattisau goes broke again. I think that's enough for Mike. Mike, they call Gus Hansen the luckiest man in poker. What on earth does that make you this evening? 
Well, Gus isn't the lucky. He's a complete idiot. I, be, he'll be broke soon, but he ain't lucky. He can't. He just puts his money in with the worst hand and gets there. Me, I'm just normal. I, I expected it. I wanted to get insurance on the big hand because I knew how unlucky I was. Everybody's like, are you crazy? you crazy? I'm like 20 to 1 favorite. I'm like, you guys just don't understand how bad I run in poker. Just rolled right off like, like it's supposed to. This guy here just put in 40,000 with Jack 4 against me. You know? The big hand you mentioned against Eric Seidel, did that seem to knock you a bit in your game? Not at all. I mean, I, uh, I was playing perfect. I mean, I just played a $100,000 pot with Ace Jack versus Jack 4. Uh -huh. I guess some nights like this, they just happen sometimes, huh? No, this is every day for me. This is just another day in the office for me. How difficult is it to play without the luck, and, and what do you have to do to your game in order to, to get to on top? I expect to lose every day, and I do. It's no big deal. And uh, it's, it's just my life in poker. It's been that way for a long time. And with that hand, Paul Kelmsley, he comes back from the dead here. He's up almost $10,000 now. Mike Matisau, wow, down $200,000. That's real money. Here comes Paul, fresh off his last victory. Cool. I call. Now we're going to be playing seven-handed for a little bit. Definitely changes the dynamics of the game. Well, I think just having Paul in the game is going to mean that everyone's going to speed up. Most of the pros look like they've switched off a bit. They're just waiting to catch a hand to maybe uh, clash against Paul. The only one who's really, really gambling with him has been Tony G. But Eric's decided to play this one with his 8-7 on the button. So who's rolling to Wolf? Three. Doesn't that pay me? Well, Tony G is... Thanks very much. Pass. Huh? Tony G's got a king, oh, but so does Paul Kemsley. <laughs> you fold him? I've got a bit of fuel this time. Neither player has a club, though. Check. Well, on the basis I want it, I might as well bet it. 10,000. Seems reasonable. 10,000. Isn't it? <laughs> he certainly seems to be enjoying himself here, Paul. How much do you like your hand now? Uh, Tony, 10,000's the bet. No, he's got he's got top pair, no kicker and no club to reach on to. He's got to throw away, and he does. I'm expecting this one to go into the coffers of put PK. I don't know where I got that. 100,000 back there. Mike, just hand that way. Look at how lucky you got. You saved 30,000. You, you, yeah. it, honestly, because you should have had. I'm not being funny. I'll go downstairs and have a go. They're obviously lucky. Hard to play. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
the 2000 World Series of Poker main event champion. You wanted to probably loosen up a little bit. I don't think uh, Chris is going to loosen the game up too much. I think Paul Kenzie's already loosened the game up. I think Chris is just hoping to catch a little bit of the uh, the dregs before the end. Alan Cunningham's made a nice, sizable race here with the King Queen. I think he realizes there's less people gambling at the moment, and it's a good time to try and pick up some blinds. But one person hasn't stopped gambling, and that's Mr. Paul Kemsley. He doesn't get to play with these guys all that often, so when he does, he's got to make it count. Once again, Paul Kemsley there. Everything he wins today goes to the Razgold Foundation for charity. So he's got an awful lot of people rooting for him. Yes. These professionals don't really need the money quite as much as uh, the charity does. Helping to fight melanoma. It's quite a sizable re-raise here for uh, Alan. Alan might think he has the best of it, but King Queen off suit might not be the hand you want to go to war with. Well, he's laid it down, and the re-raise has got through there from uh, Paul Kemsley with Jack Seven. I have a lot of respect for Chris's ability to adjust his game. A lot of tournament specialists are tournament specialists because they've been unsuccessful in cash games. Whatever it is about their personality or their style, it just doesn't work in cash games and it does in tournaments. I don't believe that that's the issue with Chris. Chris has never tried to play cash games. He's, he's always just had a fascination with the tournament form of the game. When you play tournament poker and you play cash game poker, it's a big difference. You know, Chris has is, is got a tournament style, is, is he's patient, he's patient, and then he does this. Chris doesn't know how to play after the flop. He has no clue. You know, when I was 15, I was Miss Teen Oklahoma. Interesting. Well, I've written two best-selling poker books, and I'm six foot nine. Amazing. From 10 feet away, I can throw a playing card through a carrot. Miss Oklahoma, good. Oklahoma. I don't think I'm really going to change my game because I play tournaments very much like their cash games. Uh, I think you'll find that my opponents will open up their games a little more. They're going to be playing more hands. I'm probably going to be playing fewer hands, so I'm probably going to be one of the tighter players at the table. But I'm going to be looking for good spots to get my money in, just like I do in tournaments. We are at 50 London for the Full Tilt Poker Million Dollar Cash Game. The action has been absolutely intense. Chris Ferguson, Jesus there with the hat. He's got the button. Small blind is Tony G. Big blind is Alan Cunningham. And the action is all the way over to Phil Ivey. Ivey's not going to play. And PK's got an interesting hand here. He's got Jack-10 suited. Well, that's a big bet. With a jack ten of diamonds, he makes it five thousand. Tony G Plus. wants to gamble, so he calls with queen seven. He definitely wants to gamble at the moment. I think he's a little bit hotted up. Four, five, six. Well, it's not a bad flop for Tony G here. He's flopped an open-ended straight draw. He actually has queen high is the best hand right now. Yeah, not only does he just have the best draw, he has the uh, best hand as well. He's got no way of knowing that, of course. Out of ten thousand. Re race from Tony here. Raise of 29,000. Re race. Wow. That's the 29 called. He said re race here. Tony G is not going to believe this when he sees it. And this is poker. Pretty sure here, Tony G, he, he is way down on the night. He's looking to gamble. He's not going anywhere. And what's going to amaze him is he's actually winning. His queen eye is good here right now. Oh, what's that? 
And this pot is going to be over $100,000 when it's all said and done. That 20. 29, cool. 29. And the amazing thing is right now, queen high is the best hand. And the pot, there it is, $127,000. And look at the hands. Nobody's got a pair yet. There's still betting to come. And there's what a check. A card on the turn. Unbelievable. Tony G still got outs here. Tony G can catch a eight, a three, or a queen to win this. What you got? Four. I can't wait to hear the cry out of Tony G's mouth when he sees what he's up against. He was winning. What a jack on the turn for Paul Kemsley. The pot is $144,000. A three, an eight, or a queen will do it here. He's got 11 outs to the river. Oh! What a card for Tony G. He wins a monster pot. Unbelievable. Now, in Tony G's defense, about 90% of the money did go in when Tony G had the best of it. Yes, it is. That is very, very true. Wow. That's gambling. You see, you would love playing with me because I'm a gambler. Paul Kemsley's going to be able to say how unlucky he was in that pot. I know I got lucky, but I do give action. You get lucky or what? I did. I put my hand out. I mean, but I gambled with it, didn't I? I mean, you played, what, yeah. That's just, you, you know, I got gamble. I got, I got a heart. I got a gamble and a heart. Hundred please. And with that hand, Tony G, now up forty-four thousand dollars. Paul Kemsley takes a big hit. He's down fifty-five now. Pass. 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 Action is absolutely crazy. I got very lucky. Nobody can say these guys aren't gambling. You were in a mess, weren't you? I you wasn't, certainly I wasn't can't say that. Oh. You got me tangled up. Yeah. I'll raise it. Gonna raise. You got me tangled up. What can I say? 2,000. Mm -hmm. I had a a raise of 2,000 from Tony G on the button. He has got the goods. He's got Ace Jack. Absolutely. Yeah. Inside the call. Inside the call. Yeah, the call from Eric with the 10-9. Uh, Eight. Ace. Four. Spade in both Tony G and Eric Seidel's hand. The bigger one with Tony G. Nine. But that nine, a nice. Oh, yeah, Two thousand. It's a big flop for Side. A big flop for Tony G. There. He has top pair with the jack of spades. Well, that's probably why he's jacked it. Nice card for Eric to get involved with. Jack. But a great card on the river for Tony G. Tony G bets 10,000 on the river. Huh? And Seidel really can only beat a bluff here. Yeah, exactly. And uh, surely if Tony G had been bluffing, he would have done it on the flop. The ace has come, it's a perfect opportunity. He's got to give Tony G a big hand here. Seidel trying to piece it together, piece the, piece the puzzle together here. And he is going to call, look at this. Well played by Tony G, checks the flop. And he is going to get the call from Seidel, and he's going to show him ace jack and take down a big hand there. Probably a little bit of a surprise. I am surprised there that uh, Eric Seidel called that. He's obviously thought that with the check on the flop that uh, Tony G doesn't know, have any of it. I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. I've got a lot to win. I don't think the other guys have as much to win. Because if I can, if I can get a few of those guys broke, that's a scalp to me. And that's, that's really, really important. I, I want to face these guys and I want to destroy them. And that's, I'm going to really enjoy that. We are watching a masterclass in poker here from the world's elite. Join us after the break for plenty more.
So as another $100,000 lands on the table, there is now over $1 million in play. Let's see who can take the majority of it and rejoin our commentary team of David Tuckman and Gary Jones. Oh, thanks. <laughs> no, you are. Uh, over a million dollars on the table. It's Gus Hansen to bring in the action. And win. Listen, you're lucky you didn't win that cool. off Mike. Oh, poor Mike, but I've done enough to him with Cool. 64. 600 called by both Gus Hansen and Phil Ivey. Paul Kemsey seems to have put on the brakes a bit after his uh, big, big clash with Tony G. <coughs> Tony G in with his Queen 8. He obviously hasn't lost his gamble. And he raised on the blind. Alan Cunningham in there with Queen 10 on the button. Eric Seidel in the small blind with King 10. So they're all gambling at this stage late in the night. That will look terrible, Eric. Check. 3, 4, 6. Not an awful lot there for most of them. Phil Ivey with the best of it here with ace three. He's got bottom pair with an ace kicker. I'll bet, I'll bet it for Eric just in case. Pass. Tony G pass. betting it with his queen eight. Pass, pass. Look at this. Look, look, look what you're letting me bet with now. Oh, look at this. Band, huh? And Tony G, is, gonna, he's one of those players that confidence all. really the kind of pushes him. Cover. He wins a couple of big pots and he's just going to keep going. Exactly. He's going he's he's to play his rush. No, they just, I'm just taking control of the game. Absolute control. You can say what they like, but I've got the money. Right. Under the pump, so all the way through. You can say what they like. Let me get some pump. You're the governor. Under the pump, all the way through, and right on the end, like a champion coming I'll good. Take one. Button is in seat number one, that's Eric Seidel. Oh, Gus Hansen in the big blind, Phil Ivey's first to act. Queen A, you just let me take the pop. Someone got to get some guts and cool. pop at one time. Raise. Raise. There you go. You're showing some pop. Phil Ivey limps in with the queen right. 10 off. That's it. 5,000 times. PK is going to raise Pass. it up here, the suited you can king. Yourself. My call. You can tell by the uh, action that it's pretty well cool. the last few hands of the evening. Everyone wants to gamble. Wow, what a hand to get this late in the evening. Oops, he's reaching for a stack. He might make it like 25. Cost him an awful lot later on, earlier on rather. Crazy, crazy, here he comes. Crazy, daisy. Crazy, daisy, there it is. He's trying to that? keep at least 20. one player 19, in. 19, that's not much, 14 each. Plus. Tony G making it sound like it's not going to cost a lot. Plus. I think he still wants to gamble. Pooling. Wow, an all-in from Paul Kemsley. Don't worry about me. And PK has moved all in here. He has moved right into Alan Cunningham's aces. And, uh, well, you know what? Alan really played great. Got a bad beat earlier. And unless he gets incredibly unlucky, he is going to double up here. The pot is $133,000 to the flop. All right, ace three of hearts. Eight. Eight nine of hearts, nine, nine of hearts. Six. Six of spades, nothing there for, <laughs> for Kelmsley. PK I needs a seven. Four. He needs a seven. Six. Not going to come. Oh. So close yet I so far. Yeah, I have to be crazy. And yeah. Alan Cunningham there, I clean it out. back from the dead, yeah. doubles through there. He's up to 133,000 now. If, it's, if, if he hasn't got a hand. What a time to pick up aces, huh? Absolutely perfect. How about that? Ace three of hearts. Oh dear. Yes. Well, with only one hand right, left to go, yes. Paul Kemsley sitting there with just over thirty thousand dollars in front of him. What's the price that he's going to pump it in in this hand, David? Well, you know he's here to gamble. <coughs> still having a good time, still smiling, still laughing. I'm sure he'll gamble. Not a bad hand to gamble with here. Seven. Well, he's announced all in. I what saw it coming. He's just going to put $31,000 in there Pass. Come on, in a gamble. Let's see if anyone's going Pass. to call. Well, let me yeah. ask you this. Now, obviously, it's all gamble. How strong a hand do you need to call? Well, I think everyone knew he was going to gamble with this. Probably any kind of pocket pair. Oh. Well, now, sixes might be enough. 
Now, is Seidel going to re-raise, though, to try to close anybody else out, or is he just going to smooth call? Well, the problem is if he uh, re-raises here, he could walk into a bigger hand behind him. It is a tricky one to play. Unlikely for Roland to call that one. 10,000. But Gus is sitting there with Ace Jack. You 22. can tell he's interested, and he's having a look to see how much it's going to cost. 22. 22 I, I think Phil Ivey's already passed. Pass. But Eric Seidel's passed. The sixes aren't going to be gambling. I'm pretty sure Gus Hansen will call this. Oh, Gus Hansen is definitely going to call this. I haven't looked at my cards. Oh, that's a... Well, I'm not going to fold if Phil wanted to do something. So I'm, I'm just, I'm just shoving in the rest, just in case. He's decided he's shoving in the rest. It's an all-in for what about the other dudes? Gus Hansen. Oh, okay. be winning. He's making sure he's getting this one heads up. That would have been a good spot to pick up aces if it you were Phil. It certainly Ivy. would. It would have been interesting to find out what Phil would have needed to call that bet. Believe it or not here, PK is actually not in that bad shape. He's got live cards. And this is for the championship here. If Gus Hansen wins this, he is the champ. Yeah, he will end up winning the most money on the day. Let's see what the flop brings. Ten. Eight. That's a diamond. Eight. That's a second diamond, but wow. it's an ace. So he can't catch a five or seven anymore, but he can catch nice. the nine diamonds. And there's it's a diamond. It's a diamond, but it's aces and jacks for Gus Hansen. He's got four cards. That's not one of them. Well, and, uh, and Paul Kemsley, the man who livened up the full tilt poker million dollar cash game, wins the last pot of the night and the consolation prize. So with the game over, I can now reveal the final standings for the full tilt poker million dollar cash game. The game's biggest losers were Mike the Mouth, who's down $200,000, and PK, who came to the table with 150, but leaves with only 63. How much did you enjoy it out there? Very much. It was great fun. Great fun. One queen, a bit unfortunate. I might have been sitting here as a winner. After some big wins and a major loss to Gus Hansen in show three, Eric Seidel ends up just $2,200 down. It's always fun when you're playing with the best players in the world, and that's what you had here today. You just had some, you know, great players. You got Phil Ivey at the table, and Mike Mattiso, who's been playing very well, and you know, Alan Cunningham, who's just been playing fantastic poker. And you know, I mean, that's you know, you can go on and on. It's just it was an all-star lineup. Jennifer Harmon walks away with a steady $26,700 after leaving the table in show two, but Roland De Wolf got just ahead of her by only $200. The start was a bit cagey, but as it got on, you know, Mike Madison got stuck. Uh, Tony G was sort of just being clueless, and the amateur guy was was uh, he was real fun. So you know, there are three of them really great to play with. But now it's the big four who made over fifty thousand dollars each, and of course, at the top of our table, the million dollar cash game champion Phil Ivey with a staggering ninety two thousand eight hundred dollars clear profit. Phil, congratulations. How pleased are you to be the champion today? The champion? I'm, I'm pretty pleased. It's always nice to come uh, to another country and win money. So uh, I'm pretty happy with myself right now. And what were some of the turning points today for you? The turning points? Um, well, there was a hand where, against Mike Mattiso where I bet um, 5000 and he raised me. He raised it to 15000 He said he had a pair of threes, and I flopped a set, and I re-raised them. And that, that, that kind of got me off to a good start where I could, you know, uh, play a lot of hands. And uh, I flopped a couple sets here and there, and I was, I was able to win a couple hands like that. And uh, it was just smooth sailing the entire way. Great. Well, congratulations, Fred. I'd like to present you with the trophy. You are the full tilt poker, million dollar cash game champion of 2006, so now, enjoy it. Now I just got to figure out a way to get it home. So there are big winners and even bigger losers. I'm sure they'll all have stories to tell, but in the end, that's poker. You can bet your bottom dollar they'll be back for more, and we hope you will too. But now, from all of us at 50 London, it's time to say goodbye.